This is Math 142, and we are uh, in section 5.6. We're going to talk about harmonic motion. We're going to take what we've been working on with sine and cosine and apply it to some, some motion, just simple harmonic motion for us. So um, one, one way that we talk about harmonic motion is if we had a weight on a spring. And if we were to, to pull this down and then just let it oscillate up and down like this, um, what we could do is we could measure time versus height. And so as time goes on, the height, the height changes. And we're going to talk about ways that we could model that using sine um, and cosine. And let me just show you an example. This is a pretty, I, this will not be very long, but this is a pretty good example of it. Uh, so they have this uh, spray can, uh, just like spray paint can. It's on a spring right here. And that guy can roll this and it moves the paper along. So they've turned the spray paint, the spray can on, like they did a thing to hold down the, the valve. And then they, they pulled it down so it's going up and down on the spring. And then he's going to pull that along. And you can see how it makes a pretty good sine wave, depending on how fast he pulls this. If he pulled it faster, um, you know, it would spread it out more. If he pulled it slower, it would compress it more. But this is, an, this is an example of harmonic motion. Another example would be um, how long the days are during the year. So this graph is, is the graph of a year. And you'll notice there's dates down here. Um, actually, yeah, to 2013 to the end of 2013 to the end of 2014. And the different colors depend on what latitude, how far north you are. And this would be uh, the length of the day, sun, sunrise to sunset. And you can notice it makes this nice, nice little sine wave, and it gets that the amplitude uh, gets smaller depending on how close you are to the equator. As you know, the further north, the more extremes we have um, in hours of daylight. So that's a pretty good example. You know, it's a periodic function because uh, the sun is is. It's at the center and the earth is tilted and going around the sun in this circular motion and if you take this circular motion put it out in time you start to get uh, sine waves now here's another example it's not quite as clean but if i were to look at the tide chart for bellingham um, notice that it looks like it's it's has this period to it it looks like a combination of maybe sine waves or sine and cosine or something like that. And this makes sense too, because as the moon goes around the earth, it's pulling, uh, it's, it's causing these, these tide, this tidal movement with the water. So let's think about some things that we, that we know. I know that if I have sine and I'll say uh, T for time, I could use an X as well. Like when I do it on Desmos, I'll use an X, but if I want to mess with the amplitude, there, there's that a right there. And if I want to mess with the period, how fast it's happening, um, I can have a multiplier in here. And in harmonic motion, we, we typically use this symbol. Um, and it, that's an omega. That's a lowercase omega from the Greek alphabet. So I have a couple things of going here. And I could also do it in, in cosine. So a couple things. I have, um, this is my amplitude. It's basically like, how far it's displaced off of the off the midline we know we know that we've talked about that now this multiplier right in here we've talked about um that omega or whatever that whatever we use for that as affecting the period we know that the period of this function would be 2 pi divided by omega divided by that multiplier um and that period again is just um, how long it takes to repeat itself. Now, um, there's another measure that I can talk about, which would be units of time. In other words, like um, within one unit of time, how many times does this repeat itself? Notice that's like, like the period flipped over. That's like the reciprocal of the period. Um, so if I were to go this, which is the same as one over the period. What I'm measuring is um, how many cycles, how many repeats per unit of time. 
So it'd be like cycles per minute or cycles per day or something like that. And that is called the frequency. So let's take a look at, um, at Desmos for this. And let's uh, just graph something like uh, y equals sine of five, uh, five sine of a 2t. That would look like this. Notice, uh, we can notice a couple things about this. I'm going to pull this over to here so I can write on it. So I can notice a couple things about this. I know that the amplitude is 5. So in other words, this displacement from the midline to here is, is 5. This would be like if I had a string, uh, a weight on a spring, and then without any motion on it, it just hangs here. I pull it down to here, and then it Oop, comes back up, comes back down, comes back up. Notice we're not accounting. We're not accounting for dampening, right? Like in a in a friction environment, these would lessen as time goes on. And, and there's ways to deal with that. But we're gonna we're gonna just deal with simple harmonic motion for now. The other thing I notice is this: the period. I know that the typical period is two pi. So if I divide by this omega. My period's pi, so that means that um, from here, this is half the period back down, back up to here, there is one period right there. That's when it starts to repeat itself, and that makes sense. Uh, this is 5, 1, 2, 3, this is 3, this is about 3.14. So the period's pi, it starts to repeat itself then. The frequency, in other words, how many times it repeats it in one unit at a time, would be that flipped. Remember that's omega over 2 pi, or 1 over the period. So it's going to be 1 over pi. 1 uh, pi, <laughs> like a fraction, which is about 1 third, right? So what that's saying is this is about a third of the cycle, which makes sense. Yeah. Full cycles there. We could split it into these three parts. So yeah, so the frequency is about one third. It's really one over pi, and uh, periods pi, amplitudes five. So we can look at these uh, equations and start to uh, to recognize the pieces. Now sometimes um, we write these a little uh, a little more convenient for the frequency. In other words, sometimes um, we'll write these like y equals. I'll say five this is a different example sine of two pi times t so the frequency is sometimes abbreviated using v and this value right here sometimes we'll write this uh write this as something like that two pi times v t so let me give you an example uh, y equals, I'll change the amplitude here just because it's a different example, 10 sine of 4 pi times t. So notice what we have is 2 pi times the frequency in here. Let me show you what I mean. Let's, let's analyze this. The amplitude's 10, so this will be offset by 10 in both directions. Um, the period... Typical period is, is 2 pi. If we divide by that multiplier, it's 1 half. So uh, the, this, this repeats itself every 1 half unit. So like if this is 1 and this is a half, a full sine wave will get in within that 1 half. Notice if I look at the frequency now. Frequency, again, I can think of th frequency as 1 over the period. So 1 over a half is 2. Or I could just do it straight from frequency is um, omega over 2 pi. So that would be 4 pi over 2 pi, which is 2. See how this 4 pi is like 2 pi times v. 2 pi times the frequency is 4 pi. So v must be 2. So notice again what the frequency means is in one unit of time, this will have repeated itself twice.
You see how the, if the period's one half, the frequency has to be two. They're, they're reciprocals of each other. So, um, so now I have a couple of pieces here. I can I can do some analysis uh, just by looking at the uh, the graphs. Let me graph this on decimals real quick. Wow, look at that. I'm going to zoom in. There's zero. And let me clean this up a little bit. I'm going to shrink the x-axis because that has to get all the way up to 10 and negative 10. And I'm going to widen out the y-axis. And if you're using Desmos and you want to do this, you, you hold down shift and then you put the cursor on what way you want it to, to go. So notice that this... This repeats itself. It has a period of one half. That's my period. And my frequency is two because it makes two of these cycles within one period of time. B of t, we'll say it's 0.2 sine of 80 pi times, times t. And um, this, if we think about um, B of t, t being uh, t being time in seconds v of t is going to be um, a sound wave so this would be pounds uh, pounds per square inch how, how things are vibrating um, so if we think about this let's let's do some analysis on it um, this would be a, a, a low e kind of a pure tone low e um, what we want to do is we want to find the amplitude which is going to correspond to the volume uh, we want to find the, the period and the frequency. So amplitude is pretty straightforward. It's 0.2. If we increase that, the, the volume would increase. The period, we know that the typical period is, is 2 pi. So if we divide that by this multiplier, 80 pi, pi's cancel out. Uh, 2 over 80 is 1 40th. So the period is is one fortieth. So in one fortieth of a second, you get a full sound wave. So if we do frequency, then two ways to get a frequency. We know frequency is is the reciprocal of period, one over period, period flipped. So that'd be forty. Um, that's going to be cycles per second. It also, um, if we wanted to get it the other way, we could just go straight eight eighty pi divided by two pi, and we'll also get the forty. And that is going to be uh, cycles per second. And that would describe our pitch. Now, one thing that um, I want to point out, like there's no necessarily zero here. Or if you look at these, um, this one looks like it start at zero at cosine, but if I wanted to model this with sine, I'd have to do some sort of shift. I'd have to do some phase shift. So let's talk about ways that we can uh, deal with, with deal with a phase shift. So as I'm looking at this to, to analyze it, um, amplitude, same idea, 13. That's going to be my displacement off the midline. Uh, the period, there's my multiplier right there. Notice the way this is written. Um, this multiplier times this in parentheses, this is the way it needs to be written so I can read all of the information just off of it. So a typical period is 2 pi. If you divide that by p pi, <laughs> it's 2. The period is 2. So that means this repeats itself every 2 seconds, which means the frequency would be 1 half. And the phase shift, I can read it right off here. It's pi over 2, uh, 90 degrees. So it's been shifted to the right 90 degrees. Great. Um, so, like I said, it has to come in this form. Let me do an example when it doesn't come in that form and what we'll do with it. So if I had this and I want to find all of these again, I know my amplitude is 10. And now I'm going to manipulate this a little bit. I want this written as something times just 1t minus whatever. So I'm going to factor a 3 out of both of these. So... 3. And what I've done is I divided a 3 out. So that's going to leave me with a t here because I divided it by 3 to bring out that 3. And this one, if I divide this by 3, it's the same as multiplying it by a third. So this would be, uh, it's minus, pi over 18. And so then notice from there, um, I can get the rest of my, 
pieces, my, my period would be um, 2 pi over 3. My frequency would be 3 over 2 pi. And my shift, my phase shift, would be pi over 18. One more example. So if I had this, I want to find amplitude, period, frequency, and shift for it. I'm good with that. I can read that amplitude. That's good. I'm going to have to divide out of 4 pi from here. So I'm going to factor out of 4 pi. So if I divide this by 4 pi, it's just t, which I wanted. And notice if I go pi over 2, divide by 4 pi, the pi's will divide out, and it's going to leave me 1 eighth. So there's my amplitude. My period is 2 pi over 4 pi, which is 1 half, which means my frequency is 2, and my shift is 1 eighth. So it would be 1 eighth radians. Notice that's not in terms of pi, but it's still, it's still in radians. So this isn't something that we're going to practice, but I just want to show you because it's because uh, it's it's pretty neat, I think. So um, here's I have this amplitude of 10. I have this uh, multiplier of 4 pi. This is just a nice straight flat one. Um, no no damping going on. If I want to damp it, well, first off, like notice if I multiply this by x, what happens is my uh, if I multiply this by x out here, my amplitude is variable. My amplitude is changing with, with my x value. So if I wanted it to get smaller, I could go x to the power of negative 1. And see how it dampens like that. If you want it to be variable, you can actually um, do something like this. So that if you'll notice, this actually acts like an amplitude and the amplitude is like a sine wave and then the motion inside it is another sine wave so you can get some pulsing like this now we're not gonna we're not gonna focus on this with these but I thought it was interesting okay give these a try message me if you have questions post questions in the forum good luck